things that we You're one ugly motherfucker. For a million holidays from leading tour up. Did you take Watch Snob Be Gone and it had no effect? Are you still suffering from the following symptoms? Well, this is what you should look out for. Observe this hipster. He refuses to wear a proper watch because apparently they aren't rad or ironic enough. I only use artisanal trash bags in my Billyberg home. Does he even know the words to Purple Rain? I don't think so. Next, we have a classic watch snob actively trolling the interwebs. He requested that we keep his identity secret because he doesn't want his mum finding out. I'm in a really bad place right now and I went on the internet and lashed out at TGV. I mistakenly thought just because I have a reversal I can talk down to everyone. Meet Johnny from Queens. He can't even tell a quartz from an automatic, but wears a fake Rolex because he's all about status. Ma lasciami stare. Ma che dici? Non è finto. Well, if you suffer from any of these symptoms, we have the cure for you. The only watch in the world that has been rigorously tested by a specially trained T-Rex named Hugo. Get a real watch. Buy the Seiko 5 now. Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to share my six reasons why Seiko is the best brand in the world, my personal favorite, and I think everybody should consider owning one. And naturally my wristwatch check, I'm wearing flighty. <laughs> it had to be the beloved SNA 411. So let's start at number six. It is of course history and heritage. There's something inherently cool about them being Japanese. Um, so yeah, let's find out a little bit more. While it's safe to say in terms of the history of horology, the British, Germans, and then later Dutch, French, and finally the Swiss were the first pioneers and originators of mechanical clocks and watches. But it's the Japanese that perfected it. Seiko was founded in 1881 in Tokyo, Japan. While certainly not the oldest clock or watchmaker in the world, it's older than most, being a Japanese brand has always given the brand, well, in my heart and mind at least, an exciting sense of enigmatic exoticism and attraction. Japan is universally respected for their innovation, attention to detail, and that everlasting quest for perfection. Seiko founder Kintaro Hattori, quite remarkably, was only 21 years old when he opened his first workshop, where he started building and repairing clocks and watches. Hattori was rather ahead of his time by quickly recognizing the growing popularity of wristwatches worldwide and predicted that the demand would soon exceed that of pocket watches. The result was the debut of the Laurel as early as 1913. While not entirely in-house, many of the components he had learned to produce himself, including balance springs and enamel dials, which is quite an impressive feat. So you can clearly see that this forward-thinking mentality was, was there at its early inception. Number five, it's got to be that uh, cultural impact Seiko have had. Seiko is the only watch brand to exist that can be seen in many iconic movies, on the wrists of computer game characters, James Bond, real astronauts in space, issued to prestigious military forces, and of course, sponsoring football world cups, Olympic games, and even Formula One racing teams. These are just some of the countless diverse and wonderful things Seiko has been involved in over the decades. However, much of this comes from direct collaboration, and this can be just as varied and daring. From working with revolutionary car designers like Giugiaro to create many icons like my famed Ripley watch from the movie Aliens, or working with Hideo Kojima on his Metal Gear Solid franchise to produce a trendy and affordable watch worn by the character Venom Snake, which incidentally I have also reviewed. But the collaborations extend to high-end watchmaking too. 
They work with some of Japan's finest master craftsmen in traditional Japanese techniques. Their zarozatsu polishing is a prime example, or we can see it in the Yurushi lacquer work, taking direct inspiration from the massively important Japanese ukiyo-e artists like Hukusei and my personal favorite, Hiroshige. Seiko are not immune from having a few dark moments in history as well. Making the kamikaze watches during World War II was perhaps not their proudest moment, but it is simply no accident that they are the brand featured the most numerously in the Design Museum's 50 Watches That Changed the World book. Okay, number four has got to be technical innovation. Seiko is a brand of many, many firsts. That's undeniable. They've changed the watch game like no other brand. They've influenced every facet of not just watch um, technology, but horology as a whole. Seiko undoubtedly are most noted for changing the world for better or worse in 1969 with the introduction of the first quartz-powered Astron watches, and shortly afterwards, the world's first quartz chronograph. But their innovation with watches had already started decades earlier in the 1950s and early 60s, perhaps even their golden era of mechanical watch engineering. The aptly named Seiko Marvel was the first entirely in-house manufactured watch, designed specifically to rival the Swiss. It was massively important because it featured two of their newly developed Seiko inventions. The first being Diashock, which is a shock absorbent system, which enabled the watch to have improvements in its accuracy and stability. The second major development was the deceptively simple but equally ingenious magic lever mechanism in the automatic versions of the watch that dramatically increased winding efficiency. In 1969, the Swiss watch industry was racing to produce the first automatic chronograph. The results of this competition produced a number of icons, such as the Zenithel Primero, or the Breitling Chronomatic, and the Hoya Monaco. But interestingly, it was Seiko that was the first actually on the market in May 1969 with the Seiko 5 Sports Speed Timer. This same legendary 6139 vertical clutch and column wheel movement would go on to grace the wrist of William Pogue, with the famous Pogue version of course, in the 1973 Skylab 4 mission, making it the first automatic chronograph in space. A few years later, they unleashed the first completely titanium case dive watch with an impressive 600 meters water resistance, designed specifically for saturation divers. And then in 1978, they released the world's first solar powered digital watch. In the 80s, the innovation never stopped. Just as the Swiss were struggling to keep up, one only has to look at the Seiko Arnie, for example, the first Annie Digi dive watch, which featured the chronograph and alarm from 1982. Or in 1988, they gave the world kinetic powered watches. This technology utilized an oscillating weight that converted the energy from the motion of the wearer into electricity that then in turn powered the quartz movement. We must not, of course, neglect to mention their spring drive technologies of the 2000s that I have covered extensively. But essentially, it has a quartz oscillator, but is powered by a traditional mainspring like a mechanical watch, resulting in a deadly accuracy and a butter smooth sweep. In 2012, they debuted the first watch to receive GPS signals and named it the Astron Solar to honor its 1969 famous ancestor that brought so much of the watch world to its knees. The list of firsts is truly endless, and I know undoubtedly I have missed out many, but these are just some of my personal favorites, so please feel free to share yours in the comments below. Okay, number three has got to be that spirit of self-reliance, and also the, their ability to be a true in-house manufacturer. And something you will really um, come to value when you visit and tour watch factories is the complex process of you know turning raw materials into the finished product. This is something usually attributed to only the high-end uh, watchmakers because of the high costs involved, but Seiko does it at all levels. Seiko is among the very few brands in the world that make everything almost entirely from start to finish themselves. 
This includes micro gears, hands, motors, crystal oscillators, sensors, LCDs, batteries, even oils used in lubrication, hardlex glass, and of course that fantastically glowing luminous material, dials, and so on and so forth. Okay, number two is, well, you just can't beat Seiko. There's nothing they can't do. If they set themselves to a task, they go above and beyond. Their legacy is proof of this, um, but it's something I admire and respect deeply about the brand. While many complain about misaligned chapter rings, cheap feeling straps, or the lack of hacking on entry level pieces that are in the process of being phased out with the natural progression of the brand, Seiko has still achieved some of the highest levels of accuracy and quality in both quartz and mechanical watchmaking in the world. The brand name itself derives from Sekosha, which translates roughly from Japanese as House of Exquisite Workmanship. Seiko's quest for supremacy and accuracy is integral to the history of how the company became a powerhouse global brand. While they had been initially only successful in Japan, up until the 60s, they were not well known internationally. In order to challenge the then Swiss dominance, Seiko decided to try and make the best watch possible in the world in terms of accuracy and precision. In order to achieve this, Seiko promoted an inter-brand rivalry between two of their factories at the time. One was the Daini Sekusha Company, now known as Seiko Instruments Incorporated, and the other was Suwa Sekusha Company, now known as um, Seiko Epson Corporation. This competition led to the development of a standard in accuracy and several lines of watches that would eventually even beat the Swiss at their own chronometer trials. The victorious watch line was the Grand Seiko and was certified with an original standard of precision that Seiko made stricter in every criteria than that of Kosk's standard for certifying chronometers. These stringent standards and design elements would endure to this very day as the basis of Grand Seiko. For more on this fascinating story, check out my three-part series and review of Grand Seiko last year. This commitment to perfection extends to quartz technology just as much. Seiko were not merely content with starting the revolution with their groundbreaking technological breakthrough with quartz, but they pushed it further than any other brand in the subsequent decades. As early as 1978, Seiko released the twin quartz concept to address the impact that temperature had on the frequency of the quartz crystal oscillator. By putting a secondary crystal in the watch that was linked to a processor, it detected the change in temperature and signaled the main oscillator to compensate. The result was a massive improvement in the watch's accuracy from five seconds per month to a staggering five seconds a year. This constant innovation would later pave the way for the legendary Grand Seiko 9F quartz movement. Number one, it's got to be the fact that nobody makes as a vast differing array of, of watches like Seiko. To give you an example, this is a extremely rare watch called the Frequency. It's a drum machine, has a little pad on it there and a metronome designed for obviously musicians. And yes, it's a wristwatch. <laughs> this is insane, very, very rare. I bought it from Japan, it just illustrates the point perfectly from something like fun and a bit bizarre to, you know, everything in between. So yeah, let's, let's have a look. No other watch brand offers the consumer more than Seiko. But this is not only in the never ending choice of highly eclectic styles, but also in price ranges. Unlike most watch brands that cover a specific level, price or genre, Seiko specializes in absolutely everything. From the quirky conceptual or featuring utterly bizarre complications, or to utmost traditional and super luxurious. From the toughest respected professional tools to the cutting edge in almost every field. Most brands, and this goes well beyond watches, might excel or be known mostly for one particular thing or another. When I think of Breitling, for example, I think of aviation watches. The super ocean divers are great, but don't get me wrong, it's not what they are most known for. Seiko seems to have this astonishing ability to do everything well. This is extremely rare in any field, 
Most brands would retreat in fear at the prospect of trying to cover so much ground, or the idea of offering such a wide dynamic range of prices. Imagine Rolex making a $50 budget Submariner while simultaneously offering their standard luxury models. It would seem positively crazy. Well, Seiko do it and don't even blink twice. And at the same time, when Seiko changed the world with Quartz, in a clever move to solidify their position, they launched the Seiko 5 line the very same year. It was named after the five defining features that the multi-genre line adheres to. These would become the ultra-affordable gateway drugs to the mechanical watch world, designed deliberately to entice new and future generations of watch lovers with an accessible plethora of choices designed for everyone and anyone. For the mid-range and the sequential step-up in movement quality, the Saab line was later introduced. For luxury, there was of course Grand Seiko, which we discussed earlier. And finally, as if to purely demonstrate they can literally make anything, there is of course Credor. Credor is so high-end, very few outside of Japan, let alone watch enthusiasts, know of this uber high-end brand that started as far back as the 70s. They make everything from six-figure spring drive minute repeaters to the world's smallest tourbillon mechanisms. One could criticize Seiko for devaluing itself by making watches of all levels, but to me, it signifies a brand proud, pragmatic, and confident in itself, free of elitism and determined to make everyone enjoy watches by putting horology before profit. When I finally get to go to Japan, I will commemorate the trip by buying something special, King Seiko, Grand Seiko, maybe a Creed or who knows, Actually, that reminds me, please do add your favorite Seiko in the comments below. What is your favorite watch that they make? Anyway, uh, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. I will definitely catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao. Now, before I go, guys, I just want to quickly tell you about this extremely cool app that Watchbox have launched. This is my own personal go-to app for everything watch-related. Using the app, you can keep track of the real-time value of your watch collection. You can store watches in your digital watch box and even try on watches using an augmented reality. So don't miss out and please go to the App Store and download it today. You can access all of my latest videos right there in the app itself. And if you haven't already, please follow me on the official Urban Gentry Instagram and of course the Facebook UGWC. But most importantly of all, keep it positive, onwards and upwards.